Hello, welcome to the, I think it's the third episode of the Frontend Coffee Break, a podcast where we take a break from our everyday lives, grab a cup of coffee, a nice cup of coffee, and we talk about different frontend topics. And today we're actually talking about a very interesting topic, which is what is a frontend developer? And as always, uh, Ricard is here with me. Hello, Ricard. Hey, Tucho, how are you? <laughs> all good, all good. I mean, it's a bit hot, but at least <laughs> everything's well. Hope you're well as well. So let's dive in to, into the today's topic, like what is a front-end developer? And why don't you tell us, what do you think it's a front-end developer? Because I think it's quite broad. It is uh, not an easy answer, definitely. Um, I don't know. I mean, front, front-end developer, of course, you touch the front-end stack, right? You usually play with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, but... Lately, you know, with all these um, backend languages and cloud things using JavaScript, uh, it's complicated to know where where's the line uh, and what is actually a front-end developer. Um, I don't know. When when we interview at Netcentric, um, have you noticed like different types of front-end developers, or is it all all the same? No, I I think I've, I've noticed different profiles, and this is something very cute, peculiar because the type of front-end developer that we look uh, for. It's a very specific profile, not very specific profile, actually, but it, it is a type of profile that not everyone that applies for the job has. You know, I've seen a lot of front-end developers that I would always, I describe them more of a, uh, they're front-end developers for sure, but specialized in JavaScript. So I usually refer to them as JavaScript developers. You know, we see the profiles, we see them, it's like, okay, this is a Jav JavaScript developer. That doesn't mean that we won't interview them or that we don't want them. No, 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 no. We It's just like we know that this person is more oriented. They are more oriented into JavaScript than, than what we expect more of a front-end development. It, it's true. I've seen that. I've seen profiles and also I've seen offers where, where they look for, like even saying React developer or React uh, coder or React expert, but they don't look for CSS or HTML or all the other things like accessibility build tooling and all those other things that the front end also does nowadays. Uh, so it's hard to, to know where to draw the lines on, a, on profiles. Yeah, for me, just going back to the, the what is a front end developer, for me, it's anyone that works on the front end part. You know, we have a clear di division between the back end and the front end. It's like uh, whatever works on the browser, you know, I think that the browser is the the source of, of, of what defines a front end developer. If you develop for the browser, you're probably a front-end, or at least that's what I would call a front-end developer, which usually includes JavaScript, CSS, and HTML just like as a base. And then we have um, uh, everything that, that happens outside that, that would be like uh, a back-end developer now. Both of them could be like a web developer, which is, for example, how I started. I started when I was working uh, in, in, in development, I was started as a web developer. I worked on both what is now called the front-end and the back-end. Uh, doing Java, doing databases and everything, uh, all the way to the front end, doing HTML, CSS, and a little bit of a little bit of JavaScript, just to adding uh, a, a little bit of uh, functionality. And um, eventually, when I joined Netcentric, it was the first time, the first time in my life that I heard the term front end developer. It's like, okay, I know that this is uh, when I read the description. It's like, okay, HTML, CSS, JavaScript in general terms. And I said, yes, this is what I what I like. This is what what I feel. Like, like I want to do. And that's the moment that I, I guess how you officially became a front-end developer. Okay, so it was the, the full switch from quote-unquote full stack was when you joined Eccentric, right? I would say so, yeah. I would say that that's mm -hmm. the moment that, that for me, I became, or at least I consider myself that my career as a front-end developer started. How about you? Yeah, I, I had a similar uh, start. I think most of us have or... So I start yeah, as a web developer, full stack, whatever you want to call it, just doing you know PHP, um, databases, and and yeah, and then the front end to to connect it all, right? I mean, do the HTML, sure, do the JavaScript, and everything, everything between. But it quickly bored me, like uh, at least for me, just doing the databases and all the PHP classes and models. It was like I was not having fun. I mean, I, I was enjoying way way more all the visual stuff, right? And uh, creating the UIs doing some JavaScript here and there. And, and I guess that's how or why I transitioned slowly to a, to a more front-end role. Hmm. And, and here we are. Now, what is true is that uh, I guess that a few years ago, it was easier to, to define a front-end developer in the sense that you would say basically HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. And I remember that the profiles back then were more 
um, oriented to design, you know, like uh, people that know how to do beautiful interfaces. And I remember that that um, since before joining Eccentric, I knew that I liked uh, more of the front end part and started looking uh, for jobs related to, you know, CSS, that included CSS, HTML and such. But all the ones that I found or UX, which is one of the things that I, that I one of my, the topics that I love, uh, and I started looking for things more oriented to that direction, you know, UX. And it was more, but they were looking more for designers back then. It's like, oh, we, yeah, we want you to know HTML, CSS, uh, UX, and then to be able to to design, you know. That, and, and there wasn't anything that I could, well, I, I'm not a good designer. I, I don't, I am, I am a terrible designer. So it's like, oh, I cannot access these kind of jobs. And uh, it, it felt a little bit frustrating, you know, to... I, I've met people that work on smaller teams or smaller companies where that is very like beneficial because they are they have a design background. They did some a little bit of HTML basic, no no accessible, no super good semantics, but just you know basic HTML, basic CSS, and some jQuery. And they were able to like fill this this dual role of okay, I design this thing, and when it's done, I just slice it, and then maybe it comes a super good JavaScript developer that will enhance it. But I've seen these profiles and. Um, it's not my case. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how about now that, that we're talking about profiles? I mean, oh, what type of background do you think a front-end developer should have? I mean, could we have front-end developers of all types of backgrounds, or do they have to have a very specific education? What's your opinion on this? Mm, yeah, it's it's complicated. Uh, I think it also depends on, on where you're located. Uh, I've seen offers like for, let's say for the US, and you always see computer science degree mandatory or master's or bachelor's. And you always see like that you need a university degree in computer science to be able to get a job uh, on, on front end, right? Mm. But but I don't fully agree. I just, I, I went to college, it was just two years and, and no no hard computer science stuff. And it was it was fine that the, where most I learned was actually on the job, like, you know, getting my hands dirty and then learning. So I don't know. I mean, do you feel like that we, do you need a, a degree, a, like university degree, to, to be a front end? No, no, no. I and in a way, I think that there's this this thing that gatekeeping uh, people that are gatekeepers when they say, "Oh no, if you want to be a front end developer, you need to be an engineer." It's like I I, I disagree with that. I mean, as I said, you're. I think that you're a front end developer if you work on developing things that are related with front end or typical front end technologies. You know, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. If you work with this, uh, I think that it, you you are a front end developer, and that could be anyone. Anyone say from a, a, a full fledged engineer, but also people that take a, a workshop, a course, or, or they do something to learn on their own. And we 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 have people that that have learned on their own here in the, at Netcentric. Uh, people that that are self-taught, they started working on on things that they liked in 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 in, in um, front end well, web development. They started doing their things. They learned from here, from there, and well, they're they're, they're great front end developers or they're developers in general. And when they they come with us, I think that it's also very nice uh, that we help them at least uh, learn a little bit more uh, or help them on their way to to grow as as, yeah. as developers. Yeah. You're right. Maybe for backend is more maybe necessary to have a university degree, or maybe at the beginning of your career, like it, it gives you an edge. Uh, like if you have an university degree versus who has done just you know um, like a crash course or a bootcamp, maybe it gives you a, an advantage. But as you progress and if you have like maybe ten years of experience in the field, like this is invaluable. Like production experience trumps whatever uh, schooling you might have had like ten years ago, right? And I think that this applies to almost every job, you know, the, yeah, yes, probably, school yeah. helps a lot. It, it gives you the basis from where you can build your career. But eventually, I think experience is the one that it's more important, you know, experience. So, for example, if there's anyone, um, any the person that wants to learn front-end development or that they don't consider themselves front-end developers, my recommendation would be, to keep on, on working on yourself, to keep on trying, to keep on practicing, to keep on learning and get and and getting gain experience, even if it's on your own, because that's what's more valuable when you start uh, working. And I think that that's what eventually after, as you said, 10 years, uh, uh, someone that has been working, developing a front-end developer, as, as a front-end developer, they're going to have a, a maybe there's not going to be a lot of difference between someone that came from an engineer background and from someone that didn't come from, from such a background experience does a lot for support for people and not only here but everywhere 
Yes, yeah. it helps, but it's not necessary. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. And at Cognizant and Centric, I think we have many different like backgrounds for front-end engineers. I think we, we have like journalists, criminologists, uh, architects, and, and they all are excellent developers and they do excellent job and excellent mm-hmm. quality. And sure, it's, it's a mixed background, but it, it works just fine. And as you say, I, I, for example, for me, some of the best front-end developers that I've met are designers or journalists and it's like they don't have at all a, a, an engineer background and, and right now I, I respect them very much they have they're amazing developer front-end developers full-fledged <laughs> developers so it really doesn't matter where you come from as long as you put the hours in or, or you're interested in learning and i think that in the end that's what's important that that you want to learn and you that, that you practice it so on, on learning, how if you don't go to university, how do you learn? What what is out there for those that want to start, uh, yeah, learning front end? Hmm. Interesting thing is that, for example, I think that developing de- developing is one of the things that you have advantage on learning through from the internet because people that build the internet or work in the internet are probably developers themselves or related somehow to. Uh, computer science or this kind of thing. So the information that they have is the one that they put out there. So I think it's very easy to find all kind of, of workshops. Now, there's this one page that I that was shared in, in, in the front-end community last year, which is front-end masters. Uh, and they had a guide, like uh, a learning roadmap for front-end developer. And it, it was very nice, very interesting, because you could see, like, for example, uh, it was a diagram that they had like, okay, so this is what we think should be the roadmap, you know, in order to learn how to be a front-end developer. And it in every single step, they, they had links to different tutorials uh, or workshops. And nowadays, I mean, you can find all these kind of, of tutorials or workshops in the internet of, of very diverse uh, topics. And you can even find full courses in, in things like YouTube, for example. And then you can full videos of people that are that, that love to to share their knowledge, and they they became they they do this. Right, but then you you gotta have like at least an initial knowledge on what to look for. You know, knowing the front end masters, knowing all those things. But what about like if I don't have any knowledge and I just say, okay, uh, is it like this boot camps good enough for for learning? Is, are, are they any good? Well, we've we've had here we have people working with us that started like that. You know, people that wanted to do a career change and they went on to do a boot camp. They learned what they needed to learn and then they, they came with us. I mean, it is a good place to start. But in my opinion, um, the, these kind of boot camps give you more of a, they, they If we talk about, in the end, the front end has, I guess, different a lot of different areas. And I think that the boot camp concentrates on a very specific area, with, which is more oriented to JavaScript developing uh um, frameworks or uh, library developing, they they teach you like, oh, we're going to learn in this bootcamp how to work with Angular or how to work with React. Uh, personally, I think it gives you the, the basis, but I don't know if I would recommend someone to take a, a bootcamp unless they're looking for an Angular or React or very specific type of, of, of job, you know? I mean, the front-end uh, jobs, but, but, but uh, it's very specific. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, I think there are offers out there where if you just do a, a bootcamp on React, you might be able to get the job because the job is, you know, create React components. But we, we, we've seen and we've interviewed people that had these bootcamps and only React knowledge. And when you get them out of that context, when you ask about you know, vanilla stuff, that it's uh, like a native way, quote unquote, <laughs> a native way of, of using using JavaScript, not using this these functions from React. They are lost, right? And and they also don't, mm-hmm. don't know the fundamentals on I don't know CSS positioning, layouting, and and all those other stuff in HTML. So it, as you say, I, I agree with you. It's a good starting point, but definitely, if you want to be a front end developer, you want to have more than that, and right? you want to have more fundamentals. Yes, and I would recommend, for example, for people that go to these kind of, of boot camps to consider afterwards to take um, or look for workshops, free workshops. There's like a lot of them out there related to JavaScript development, not related to any single um, framework or anything. For example, a good good points of uh, good places to start JavaScript knowledge is you don't know JS, the, the book series. It's a fantastic book series that explains JavaScript uh, very clearly. And I, there was one that I loved. Um, what the secrets of JavaScript Ninja? I think it's something like that. It's a very good book. 
And it, 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 I mean, it, it shows you how to develop with JavaScript without having to get into any type of, of framework. And this is knowledge that you can take out and use, for example, if you want to learn Angular or you want to learn React, Vue, or Svelte, or whatever. But you know, sometimes the other way around doesn't apply. You might learn Angular, and then it's like, OK, um, you ch because the front end can be like this, like, oh, no, we're going to work now in React. And you might be a little bit lost. It might take you a little bit more more, more, more um, time to, yeah, yeah. to learn. And I think to that totally. The, the, the one that you mentioned before, we will link it in the show descriptions. But it's it's free. It's an open source on GitHub. And it's, it's really good. It's, it's super complex. Like, it has, I don't know how many chapters, but it's, yeah, if you want to know JavaScript, go for, go for that. I, I love it. Uh, <laughs> Good, good choice, Chucho. Yeah, and you know, for example, after years of working with JavaScript, uh, I, I learned, I took, I read the books, and I found things that I didn't know. Absolutely, know? absolutely. It, it doesn't matter how much experience, and then suddenly it's like, oh, so this is why this is happening. It's like, okay. <laughs> Especially, for example, you know, there's this meme that I love, the one with with uh, SpongeBob, uh, with Patrick, and the, I guess it's the superhero that says, uh, it shows like different... Um, uh, compar comparisons between the operators and things like that. Because one equals equals one, it's true, and blah, blah, blah. And then it goes all the way. Why is this false? And it's like, I don't know. I don't know if you remember which meme I'm talking I about. I think so, yeah. It's, it's, it's only like true, falsy, and all those coercions with JavaScript, double exactly. equal, triple equal, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, the nice thing about this book is that it explains to you, to you how exactly things work. So it's not only like, oh yeah, this is uh, this is true, this is false, and that's it. No, it, it explains to you what's happening behind uh, the scenes, you would say. And I think that, for example, when we interview people, I, I, I you can sort of sort of know the level of the, the person, uh, the experience based on the way that they answer these questions. You know, like, like when you say, "What's the difference between a double equal and a triple equal?" and they might give you like the basic answer: "Oh, this one does this, this one does the other." But sometimes uh, I see people that they tell you, oh, because this one does exactly this, or this is the way that's happening, or this is what is exactly happening uh, when they do the comparison. And it's like, okay, so this person has a little bit more experience regarding regarding this. Okay, so we said that uh, front-end boot camps are okay, but you need mm -hmm. to more all-rounded um, knowledge. At least is what we look for at Cognizant Net Center. We look for all-rounded JavaScript, oh, sorry, JavaScript, oh, all-rounded <laughs> front-end. You, you tricked me. That's your fault. Uh, we look for all-rounded <laughs> front-end developers. Uh, the question is, um, again, because front-end is so broad, I think that inevitably you have specializations, right? You might yes. be good in one area, that other area. How how do you handle that? Or how do we at Cognizant Static handle this, this branching of, of, okay, you are all-rounded, but then you're good in a certain area. How, how do we handle well, this is this is an interesting question because I think that um, we expect people to know or to be like well-rounded, and but then we definitely have specialists in in, in the company. But this is something that that comes up naturally. We have, for example, uh, let's talk a little bit about about the different specializations that we have here. You know, we have specialists in the front-end build. We have, we have people that that actually work on 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 our front front-end build, and which is actually available in in. It's open, it's open source, if I'm not mistaken. So yes. if people want to, to to see it, to take a look at it, it it's, you can use it. We have also people that are working on accessibility. You know, We have accessibility experts. Uh, sometimes if you have a project that you have an accessibility problem, you can call them. They come in and help you out. We also have uh, the web performance experts that eventually this actually grew into a community on itself. They, they were a lot of front-end developers. They say, OK, I like performance, and they are I think that we have two profiles. Um, well, we have two profiles of, of performance experts. You know, those that we, that are part of the performance community, and those that are front end engineer with this specialization. And I uh, and I guess that uh, uh, the company at Cognizant, this is the way that we that we handle it. Like a general front end developer that has uh, that, and that has specializations. But it's not like we push people to have the these specializations. I, I, I think that this comes naturally. Yeah, I think on the goes. contrary, we push them to be all-rounded and yes. then, of course, they branch. And, and you would expect that from a front-end lead, a tech lead, or, yeah, sure, uh, architects and things like that in the front end, you would expect them to at least know a good level of understanding of all everything, like, sure, HTML, JavaScript, hmm. accessibility, hmm. all those things. And then, of course, be good at what they love most, right? If they love most front-end build, they, they will go for that. 
but I agree. I definitely, uh, it's good to have specialists. And we also have, for example, framework specialists. Totally. Know? Yeah. We have people that are specialized in Angular. They, they love Angular. They love Vue. They love uh, React. And we're starting that community of people that uh, like Svelte or love Svelte. I'm getting a little bit into, into that, for example. So it's nice to have this. But one thing that I like the way that we handle it is, is that we know what we expect. We were talking at the beginning, you know, what is a front-end developer, what skills a front-end developer has. And here, we one thing that I'm very happy about that we've been doing for a couple of years is that suddenly it's like, okay, so what do we expect from a front-end here? And we created what we call a skill map. You know, it's like a skill tree where we defined, okay, so, uh, and it was defined by grades. So it's sort of like, okay, from, from we expect them to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript with this specific knowledge, you know, that uh, we expect them to know this about JavaScript, this about HTML, this about uh, CSS, and this about preprocessors. And then each grade that you grow, we have a very specific uh, topics that we expect people to know. It's like, okay, at the set next grade, we expect them to know this much, even accessibility and eventually performance and eventually the front end build. So we have this all very def well-defined skill, uh, skill tree. And I love that because it's like, when you join the company, it's what do we, what do we expect you to know? It's like, it's there. You want to know what we, what we expect of you? It's very clearly defined and not only in general areas, but very specific even to the very specific topics. And even and this is done by grade, which is fantastic because it sort of helps to guide where um, your knowledge has to go. And as you say, the specializations we have these areas that is like this is the the main branch, and this is specialization areas. We expect you to really know the main branch, but the specializations are just uh, um, added extra. Yeah, I I like it. Nothing nothing else against it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. I love it. And, and, and it, it's a, a big effort that we that we did in the company. And the nice thing is that the things that are in this skill map are things that you're actually going to work with. We don't add to the skill map anything that we don't expect you as a front-end developer or a developer that's uh, coding inside the centric to, yeah. to know. And as long as there's room for you to grow like horizontally, right? I mean, okay, I'm, I'm going to specialize in animations or... Mm -hmm front end security and things like that, it, it's possible, right? I mean, you, you choose your own path following more or less the same river, but <laughs> more or less, yeah. <laughs> All right, what else? Well, no, just to, to, to close down on the, on the, on, on the um, skill map thing, is that one thing that we try to do, and this is something that I think it's a good idea for other companies to do, to know exactly what kind of knowledge uh, they, ha they expect from their developers, is that we use this also as a base on which to build our uh, our tests, our um, interviews on. You know, I mean, you 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 also work uh, with the interviews, and the questions that we have in the interviews and the questions that we do while we interview people are always related to the topics that we work with. I we're never going to ask something, or at least in my experience, I haven't done that. Ask things that they're not going to eventually know. You know, it's like, oh, I want you to do. Uh, Double, and um, uh, I don't remember. The yeah, there's this cool question where they ask you, okay, you you are a small coin. How do you get out of the of the frying pan? Because you, there are so many tiles. Count them in backwards arrays and do all those other things. Now, yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah. It's like if we don't expect you to know this, we're not going to ask uh, ask about it. And the same way, um, if we expect you to know this, we're going to ask it. And we have this skill map, and we use the skill map as a base. And that's one of the things that I think it's fantastic about the way that we have organize ourselves in the sense that um, we we have a, a front-end developer. This is what we expect of a front-end developer. This is what we expect of, as a front-end developer per grade. And we use that as part of our interview process. It's like when we're interviewing for a certain grade, we ask the questions of the things we expect them to, to know. And um, I guess that one of the, the, the things that, that, that you mentioned is that since we are expecting a very broad definition of a front end, we include accessibility a lot of the times and performance also depending on the, on the grid. And there's a lot of people that don't take care of this. You know, a lot of uh, front end developers that don't that have heard about accessibility but don't know about it. My recommendation is um, even if you're not actively working with accessibility, I think it's a, a, a knowledge worth pursuing at least on the basic to know what it is what it is about and to be able to 
to know where to investigate if they say, oh, I need you to do something, some some accessible website. It's like, okay, so I've never done it, but at least I understand what it is and I understand what I need to do. Great segue into something I want to talk about. Just last thing <laughs> before we close off. So we talked about the, 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 the obvious, right? we talked about the hard earned skills like the yeah, JavaScript, HTML, functions, frameworks, all those things. But I think there are certain skills that a front-end developer needs to have or, or that the front-end developer like develops or that is different than from, from, from other type of engineers, maybe backend or maybe other stuff. Because like for instance, backend might be more stale when it comes to uh, stack, but front-end is always changing. Right, so that's not for everybody. I mean, when people ask me, okay, uh, what do you do and all those things, and like, okay, I don't know what I'm going to do in five years because front end changes so fast, so quickly that it has to like you have to be up to date, and it's something you need to like be aware when you like <laughs> go into front end and 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 be willing to do like be, be willing to maybe on a Friday afternoon read some article about the newest the newest framework, right? Definitely. I mean, and this is one thing that I love about the community that we have that. It's a community that is constantly sharing these kind of articles that they read. You know, the, you're constantly looking at, oh, this new CSS thing came out and they share it. Or, or are you excited about the next blah, blah, blah performance or about this or about that? And they share these resources. And being a front-end developer means that you need to be up to date uh, a lot of the time. Uh, but cu oddly enough, curiously enough, well, not oddly enough, but interesting enough, the base knowledge is always there. You, it doesn't matter how long, um, how many years pass go, go through. Um, you need to know, really, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I mean, uh, uh, in general, uh, at least for, for, for us uh, uh, as a front-end developer, that's, those are the three technologies that you need to know. And they evolve a lot, that's true. But those three are like the basis on, on, on which everything is built. And then you have a lot of new frameworks, a lot of new tools, and a, a lot of new things. But all of them, I think it's to make the JavaScript, the CSS, and HTML a bit easier, perhaps. Um, debatable, but easier, perhaps. <laughs> I, I, it used to be easy, no, not anymore. jQuery was easy. Now, now it's not easy. Now it's super complicated to make it perform and make it anything. <laughs> but really, I think it's something to consider. It's, it's, it's that. Um, it, it's exhausting sometimes. Like, you know, the amount of newsletter you, you and I get or the tweets, uh, YouTube channels, podcasts you listen to, and the, the amount of content that you have to constantly be consuming, it, it's it's enormous. And, and, and yeah, as you're a front end, you know that your own stack will not be the same for, for five, 10 years. And we've seen that, all, again, going back to the interviews, right? we, we've seen people that have been stuck in a certain technology for five years. Now they're also out of date when it comes to, sure, React or Svelte, or all those things, that it's hard for them to get a new position somewhere else because, yeah, I've been doing whatever, jQuery for, for the last 10, but wow, man, maybe it's, it's time to, <laughs> to drop it. But again, because you were not up to date, you were not following newsletters, tweets, and everything, you, you were out of the loop. It happened to me in, in an interview uh, a couple of well, four or five years ago that I was interviewing this person that for a high for a senior, senior level. Okay, he was a senior developer. He definitely had the the years and the experience, but he had stopped doing front end developer developing for about two or three years. Now, only that, and he had moved to do something a little bit different. I think he went a little bit on management side, and when he when he um, came back, I was interviewing him, and he was. Out of date. I mean, I was asking uh, the very basics. He knew them, and he knew them well. It's like I said, well, it's the difference with the, between the double equal, triple equal. He knew them. But then I went to another more more modern topics, and he was like completely lost. And this is because, well, as you say, that it moves so fast that suddenly, you, if you if you stop paying attention, you're off. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 good. It's gone. Blink of an eye. Definitely, definitely. Right. Well, I think that um, that's all that we have for today. But um, I, I would like to end up the, 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 the podcast with a question. Why don't you uh, go ahead? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say we repeat the same question at the beginning and think, what is for you and listening? What is for you a front-end developer, right? What, what it entails, what the responsibility is? Well, how, when you somebody tells you, okay, I'm a front-end developer, what do you imagine? Or if you're a front-end developer, what do you explain to your friends? Well, what, what is a front-end developer to you? Yeah, yeah. So please comment and uh, and we'll see you, I guess, next time. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.